You're listening to County Conversations, a podcast brought to you by the New York State Association of Counties. I'm your host, Kate Pierce-Nims, NYSEC's Multimedia Specialist. Today we're joined by Michael Zerlo, Clinton County Administrator and President of NYSEC. We'll hear about his path to county go- government leadership and what's in store for his presidential term at the association. President Zerlo, welcome to County Conversations and congratulations on your election. Well, thanks, Kate. I appreciate the opportunity to have a little chat with you this morning. So you were sworn in as NYSAC's 78th president in September during the annual fall conference. But before we get into your role at NYSAC, um, can you tell us a little bit about how you came to county government? Uh, Sure. Um, uh, My family, my dad, uh, has always been uh, in in local government, Uh, was actually a county legislator uh, in my home county of Clinton. Um, but then I, I, I took a little divergence uh, to state government after, after graduate school and spent 10 years of my career working in the state senate. Um, always, always hoping um, to, to get back in county government service. That was my love. Um, my master's degree is in, is in uh, public administration. Um, always hoping to be um, involved in, in, in running a local government. Great. And what motivated you to make that jump from state legislative staff to county government? It was that love of county government. Can you talk a bit about that experience? Sure. Uh, you know, you know, all, all politics is local. Uh, so um, I knew that my home county, uh, where I have, um, you know, a lot of friends and, and, and a, lot of, uh, a lot of ties, um, there, there would have been an upcoming vacancy. Um, so um, there was an opportunity to be the assistant um, county administrator. Uh, and I applied for that job. My uh, the the uh, state senator that I work for, a uh, very wonderful man, Ron Stafford. Uh, I, I relish uh, that opportunity that he gave me in the state senate. But he was um, he was retiring, um, probably within the next three years. And you know, I, I felt it was the right time to make the move from from state government to county government. Uh, I you know I had made a a, a a bunch of contacts in state government. I felt. I, that I would have been, I brought some valuable resources um, back home to county government, some valuable contacts, some some insights, um, and I think it worked out well. Great. Now, when you came to county government, what did you find was the most gratifying or exciting? Um, and if you also wanted to focus on that in a different lens, what was the most challenging about coming to county government? Uh, you, you know, we all know now, uh, working in county government, what we do. Uh, you're learning. I've been I've been doing this 21 years now, and, you know. And, and when my county legislature, you know, we pass resolutions through the through the standing committee process and to the full board, I'm learning things. I continue to learn things each and every day. So the the breadth of things that county governments in general do, the programs, the people, the lives we touch. Uh, I tell everybody we, you know, county government touches touches the newborn. To the aged, we touch the impoverished to the wealthy. Uh, we touch the good citizen and we touch the bad citizen. There is nobody in any of our counties uh, that doesn't lean on and depend on county government service. Right, county government is integral, and it really is that local line of first response in a lot of cases. And we've seen that in the different challenges that have in, that have come up over the years. Um, and in NYSEC's nearly 100-year history, you're only the second president from Clinton County. For our listeners who may not have had the privilege of visiting Clinton County, can you tell us a little bit about it? What's your county community like, and what makes it unique? Yeah, I love Clinton County. Let's start there. Um, uh, we are the northeasternmost county in the state of New York. Uh, my, I grew up, my house was literally a quarter mile from the Canadian border and 35 minutes from downtown Montreal. Uh, we, you know, we are, we see ourselves as an extension uh, of, of uh, the province of Quebec. Um, they um, are an economic driver to our community. Um, but, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're a local, hardworking constituency. Um, you know, we, we have a wonderful recreation and tourism uh, environment in Clinton County. Um, and, you know, we're just, we're just good people uh, at the end of the day. Great people, I love. But let me let me North let me country. also yeah North Country North Country yeah, connection yeah. there. Uh, you know, it, you mentioned I'm the second uh, uh, president from Clinton County. The gentleman who actually was the administrator when I came to be the deputy gentleman by the name of William Bingle, and he was the first. And I would be remiss; he's no longer with us. But I would be remiss if I didn't give him a little kudos. He was he, uh, he's he's one of my professional mentors, and and we miss him. 
thank you for mentioning that. Happy to pay that homage to him. Um, so we touched a little bit about how Clinton County is your home mm-hmm. county and what sets it apart from the state of New York. Um, how has your North Country perspective and this perspective of being the most northeastern county on the border of Canada, how has this impacted your work at NISAC advocating for the 62 counties across the state? I, th- I think the North Country, uh, you know, every region in the state has its has its uh, certain um, qualities. Uh, the North Country is is a is a group of wonderful counties, um, and you know they have some special interests. Obviously, the Canadian border uh, touches uh, four of us, or f- one, two, three, four, five of us. Um, so you know we we do bring the northern border perspective to the discussion. Uh, we bring a hardworking perspective to discussion. Uh, I think it's important to advocate sometimes, uh, not the association, but sometimes in the state of New York, uh, the North Country is is not the region that gets the most press. So I think it's important that we continue to advocate the importance of the North Country. Uh, the tourism that we bring, Lake Placid, a uh, home of two Olympic Games, is in the North Country. Uh, you know, this is this is a, a very, very important part of the state, and, and as long as people will listen, I will tell them that. Great, and happy to have that conversation. We could have a whole episode of the podcast <laughs> just on the the vibrancy of the North Country. Um, speaking from two North Country folks here, uh, for our listeners, I grew up in Franklin County, so that's home for me, your host, at ISAC. So. And my, my, my immediate neighbor to the West. <laughs> so, I... Uh, You've been in county government for yeah. 21 years. Yes. What has your experience with NISAC been over your tenure as a county official? Uh, w- wonderful. And I, I, can tell you, I can tell you that uh, when I was working in the state senate, um, there was always a Clinton County delegation um, that came to NISAC uh, legislative conference that always came to the state capitol to lobby uh, their assembly member and their senator, who I happened to work for. So I understood the dynamic uh, between county government and the state of New York, um, so uh, it, it was. It was you know it was not lost on me um, the importance of that relationship. Yeah, what's the most misunderstood aspect do you think of, about that dynamic between county and state government? Um, people still to this day, as long you know, we we in our profession continue to talk about this, but they don't know what we do. We you know we're we, you know, there's some local control over a few programs, um, but we are agents of the state of New York. Um, you know that we can't forget. I mean, I just passed, um, I recommended a budget to my county legislature, and uh, even though our tax levy went down, uh, wonderful, wonderful thing. Um, you, you know, ninety-nine percent of that tax levy uh, was consumed by state mandates. Um, you know, and, and mandates sometimes is an ugly word, or you know, is consumed by state programs that we pay for. You, you know, we are tethered. Uh, whether it's Department of Motor Vehicles or to probation services, um, you know, we, we are tethered to the state of New York. Right. Uh, this- social services. I mean, we, we are the, you know, we are the liaison. Uh, we are the state liaison to the local communities. Right. And so this is something that's on the horizon as we head into the new year, into 2023. Um, some of this focus. Um, can you talk a little bit about um, what's on the horizon but some of the challenges and opportunities, some are continued, as we know, mm. like the continued opioid crisis, lingering effects of COVID, energy policies, climate change mitigation, as well as, like you've mentioned, a litany of fiscal challenges. What do you foresee as some focal points in your tenure as president of NISAC? Jeez, you know, that sounded like my, my acceptance speech <laughs> in, in Buffalo. Uh, so uh, there is a lot on the horizon. We can't, you know, it's, complacency is not an option. Um Many counties are in a decent financial position right now. Um, you know, I think it's important for us to continue to tell our story um, that we are agents of the state of New York and that, you know, our, those resources are valuable to us. And just because we are in a situation that is is okay, um, that, that the state of New York shouldn't be taking money back from us that we use to run their programs. Um, you know, there will be a day when the dynamics change, uh, and it's okay to have a little, uh, some, some resources. There's a couple other big issues uh, um, that we need to talk about. Uh, community colleges, um, 
uh, the federal Medicaid assistance percentage uh, that that we're we're, we're talking uh, to the board about today. So yeah, there is a, there is some there is some big issues, but um, I I think um, you know a, and a robust legislative agenda that our NISAC committee structure um, you know defines uh, and then we put uh, into implementation um, in you know when we meet in February. Right. There's a lot to look forward to in the coming year yeah. in terms of county advocacy opportunities to address some of these challenges and to move forward into yes. the new year um, and to come out on top, yep. right, as county government. So um, as we're coming to the end of our conversation today, is there anything that you would like to share with the county audience, either about some plans for 2023 or just introducing yourself as NISAC's president? I'm, I'm humbled. I'm humbled for the opportunity. Um, you know, I'm, uh, you know, I've been in, in uh, like I said, in county government for 21 years, but I'm well aware of, of what the association uh, does for county governments in the 10 years of my career before that. Uh, it's, it's, you know, I'm, I'm humbled and honored um, to get the vote of the membership. And uh, I, I promise everybody that I'll, I'll do my very best uh, and commit to our successes. Great. Well, thank you again for taking the ha time to have this conversation. Um, there's a lot in store, but I can say on behalf of the counties of New York that we're looking forward to your tenure as president of NISAC and all that you will do to bring advocacy forward on behalf of New York's counties. So, well, thank you, Kate. I appreciate it very much. And we'll have you on again soon to talk about some of these issues. So, Let's hope. That'll be great. Great. Thank you so much.